Gyro effects can be used to make elements follow the movements of the mouse, while scrolling animations follow the scrolling behavior of your viewers. And this can be a very useful way to add interactivity, but especially dimension to your page. So first of all, let's dive into the gyro effects. Um, as you can see, as I start moving my mouse across the screen here, you will see some of these circles moving along the screen with me. Uh, because I'm moving my mouse here, or even against the movements of my mouse, uh, if I have applied negative uh, values to them. And this is done using gyro effects, which you can find under the effects tab. So if I go out of the preview mode and select one of these circles here, I can go under the element panel into the effects tab to find the cursor movement uh, effect that I apply to this uh, element. And it has a negative five horizontal value, which means that it will uh, move negative five according to my horizontal mouse movements. And the other one has vertical uh, positive five, which moves with my mouse, uh, while the horizontal value moves against the movements of my mouse. And this is done um, to a few of the circles. And if you have multiple elements here that you can stack on top of each other in a cool way, you will add some interactivity and some dimension to your page as these elements starts moving across one another or even behind one another as your viewer starts moving their mouse. Now, the second option was the scrolling behavior. And this works practically in the same way, uh, according to the movements of the mouse, but not a movement according to the movements of the mouse directly, but according to the scrolling behavior of my viewers. Um, so if I start scrolling down in this preview right now, you will see that the bigger circles right here are kind of uh, dragging across each other. So this uh, bigger, darker grayish one will move on top of the lighter gray one. Uh, while the one on the side moves across the darker gray one, like so. And this is done using scrolling animations in order to make the element respond to the scrolling behavior of my viewer. So if I leave the preview again and select either one of these, uh, of these bigger circles here and go under the element panel to the animation tab, you will see that the scrolling animation has been applied, which of course, as we learned, is only available on long read pages. Um, so, yeah, we have this scrolling animation, the type is parallax in this case, there's another type called keyframe, which we'll dive further into in the next course, uh, but this parallax one scrolls with the behavior of my viewer, uh, and it has an acceleration of minus two, so if I scroll down, this element actually moves upwards instead of downwards. Uh, the other one, the lighter gray one, moves with me if I scroll down, because it has a positive value. So this, this adds some dimension to your page, especially if you cut your images, for example, into multiple, uh, into multiple parts. You can overlay um, these, these images across each other to make them have multiple parts and to make them uh, more three-dimensional. So now that we know how to do this, let's dive even further into animations in the next course. Well, we'll explore different types of keyframe animations to create custom animations completely from scratch.